Yes. Hello, good evening. This is Charlotte. And I'm Daryl. And we're the bankers, bankers. and we are back for yes, we another are. session of prayer. Tonight's going to be a little bit different because we're not going to only pray. Tonight, we're going to be doing decrees. Mm -hmm. Decrees because of the climate. We've been saying that, but this is something that can be done anytime, but we really want to highlight that in this season. So one of the things we wanted to start with is to tell you that God and his word are what? Eternal. So we're going to be saying scriptures. You can write them down, check them out. First Peter 1 and 25, it says, but the word of the Lord endureth forever. So it means his word again is eternal. Mm -hmm. And this is the word that by which the gospel is preached unto you. That's the other part of that scripture. So if his word is eternal, it is capable of transcending time. That's right. right. Matter, space, and any circumstance. Mm -hmm. So because of that, Again, tonight we want to focus on, or whenever you see this, we want to focus on decrees, things, decrees of encouragement, not just for you, because remember, whatever we're saying, we are definitely applying it to ourselves. That's right. You agree? Absolutely. And so before we start the decrees, and then we'll segue into prayer, before we start the decrees, we want to start with communion, because yes. we think this is something that is very important as couples. This can be done at any time you read through scripture, you'll find that uh, communion can be done any time. That's right. So Mr. Baker is going to conduct the communion for the bakers. Yes. Yes. Uh, it's important for us to uh, do communion uh, in our homes as well, because that's what it actually initiated. It initiated in the homes of the believers and believers are the ones that actually can take advantage and receive uh, and reap the benefits of communion. And when we do in communion, we basically um, bring in the Lord Jesus Christ um, into remembrance of what he had done on, on, on the cross. And he also commanded and commissioned us to also to do this as often as we will. And in putting him, putting him in remembrance, but also making a, a conscious decision that we are communion with the Father. And so the best way of doing that, and it's a, it's a spiritual, uh, a, it's, it has a spiritual significance behind it. And you want to make sure that you're in the right uh, state of mind and that you really have given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ in order to reap the benefits of the, the breaking of the bread and also the wine, in which we do have sparkling juice. We don't have wine. We have the sparkling juice, but the representation and the sparkling juice represents his blood because without the shedding of the blood, there will be no remissions of his, of sins for us. Amen. And if you're not in that, in that space, in that place to be able to take advantage of the communion, then we want to make sure that you have the opportunity and the way that you have the opportunity of being able to be in fellowship with the father is by asking him to forgive you of your sins. You can easily invite him into your heart, into your life by stating a, state, a simple prayer. And it's by faith that we state this prayer, not just repeating the words, but also making a declaration and a decree and making it personal that you're believing that Jesus Christ have died on the cross. And you can repeat this prayer after me by saying, Dear Heavenly Father, I ask you today that you would come into my life, that you would forgive me of my sins, that you would create in me a clean heart and renew within me a right spirit. I believe that Jesus Christ died upon the cross. He shed his blood for my sins. And I believe in my heart that I am born again. And I confess my sins and ask you to forgive me I receive your forgiveness tonight or today. And I confess that Jesus Christ is Lord over my life. And that's a simple prayer. And if you have done that and you want to uh, take advantage of the communion, and we can do that because he, 
Jesus also have left us a pattern to follow. And that's in 1 Corinthians 11 and to beginning at the 23rd verse. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus Christ on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take, eat. This is my body for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same matter, he also took the cup at the supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For, all, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And so now we want to take and eat the bread, which represents the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's take and eat now. And our daughter is here. She's taking communion with us as well. That's significant as well. So now this cup right here represents the blood that Jesus Christ has shed. And let's drink all of it. That was good. Mm. So again, we think um, it's very important as couples that we we do the things that the Father has commissioned us to do. It's another way to enrich our marriage, to, to strengthen our marriage. And that's why we're coming to you. We're coming to you again tonight with, we started with communion and then we're going to start, now we're going to start decrees because we want to help you to find ways, if you need it, to have encouragement not just in this climate, in this season, but anytime. Mm -hmm. So we want to come with some decrees that we believe will be helpful. So one of the things I'm going to start with, we're going to kind of go back and forth. So when you hear this, maybe go back and listen to it again. And so you can repeat it if you like. We're going to have scripture behind it. So we're going to move pretty fast through it, but we just hope you're, you're able to glean something. So one of the first decrees it says, I am a child of the most high God. Mm -hmm. And so one of the scripture references we use was in Galatians 3, 26. For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. And in Romans 8, 14, it says, for all who are being led by the spirit of God, they, these are also sons of God. So no, you are a child of the most high God. You want to read the next one? Mm -hmm. And God is our father. Uh, according to our first Corinthians eight and six, but to us, there is but one God, the father of whom are all things and we in him and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things and we by him. And then Ephesians four and six states, one God and father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. And so Jesus, uh, the Lord has basically have uh, solidified that he is the God of all. There's one Lord, there's one, there's one deliverer. Matthews uh, 23 and 9, you want to read that? Um, I, I can read that. It's Matthews 23 and 9. And call no man your father upon the earth, for it is your father which is in heaven. So again, the first two decrees are, I am a child of the most high God. God is our father. Another one we thought was significant that the, that the father gave us. We will not be afraid because our father is with us and he wants what is best for us. Mm -hmm. You got to believe that he wants what is best for us. I'm going to just read one of these scriptures here on um, John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, mm -hmm. not as the world gives. Mm -hmm. Do I give to you? Let not your heart be troubled. Let me repeat that. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither, Neither let, let it, it be, be afraid. afraid. So I yes. think that's important. Especially, I'm going to jump down to this other um, scripture here in Matthew 6 and 34, where it says, therefore, do not worry. Mm -hmm. Do not have anxiety. I'm adding that. Do not worry. Do not have anxiety about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry for its own things sufficient for the day, its own trouble. So don't worry. The first part, don't worry about tomorrow. 
in this season and climate. Some people are, as we can tell, the way you see things, if you're looking at different social media sites, things that are happening, the way people are responding. All we have is what? We have the Father, we have his word, we have his promises. So that's what we have to rely on in this season. The next one, you want to read the next decree? Mm -hmm. And that's in Isaiah 41 and 10. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I... Uh, that's the Father, uh, mm -hmm. for the Father of our, uh, the Father is our divine protection. Uh, yes. Divine protection. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yes. So the Father, our Heavenly Father is our divine protection. And that's in Isaiah 41 and 10. It says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. Mm. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you, and I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Mm -hmm. And so God, he would protect us. He would uphold us. He would, you know, and give us strength and, uh, you know, with his right hand. So, you know, uh, we, we don't have to worry, don't have to be fearful, but it's important for us to, to, to remember who God is, even in these seasons and these times, but also remember who we are in Christ. Mm -hmm. That's important that we that we stay rooted, that we stay grounded. And, um, and the way that we can do that is, is stand in God's word. And so he wants to protect us and we should desire for him to protect us. So let's use wisdom in all that we do. And another scripture under there really quick, it says second Thessalonians three and three, but the Lord is faithful. Mm -hmm. and will establish and guard you from the evil one. He's faithful. Mm -hmm. So we have to have confidence in, again, his word. He's saying he, he is faithful, the scripture says. So we have to believe that. Another uh, decree we want to say is God cannot Can fail. fail. Mm -hmm. He cannot. It's impossible for him to fail. And that's fact. That's actually the scripture, Luke 1 and 37. For with God, nothing shall be, be impossible. impossible. So that means he can't fa fail. That's the same translation. So it says in Hebrews 6 and 18, nothing or no one is stronger or could ever overthrow the eternal king. Yes, yes. That means there's no thing, no thing greater, stronger, bigger than him. So we have to rest in that decree that God cannot fail. He's there. Mm-hmm. What's another decree we have? God does not lie. Mm. And we know he's faithful to his word, right? Mm -hmm. So if he's faithful, he's true to his word. He cannot lie. He will not lie. Mm. It is not in his DNA. It is not his makeup. Mm -hmm. He does not lie to us. Mm. According to Numbers 23 and 19, mm -hmm. God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Uh, has, he, has he said and he will not? Uh, will not do. Mm -hmm. And so, and in other words, or has he spoken and he will not make it good. Mm -hmm. So in other words, he would not confuse us. He would not renege on his word and whatever his word is, has said, we can bank on and know that his word is true. Mm -hmm. And we don't know when this word is going to be made manifest in our lives. There's seasons and times that we must make sure that we stand faithful yes. and that his word is still yet true. And so it could be a day from now, two weeks from now, three weeks from now. It does not matter. OK, <laughs> mm. he is still faithful because oh many times he is waiting for us to get in the right position. To get in the right uh, to get in the right stature, so to speak, or get in the right posture mm. in order for his word to be made manifest. OK, so he's not a man that he shall lie nor the son of man that he should repent. And I like Hebrews 6 and 18. It also says that by two immutable things in which it is impossible, impossible for God to lie. So if he says he's our protector, which we're going to read about in a minute, he is. He, he never lies. He doesn't. So we have to find those, you know, not just the decrees. Decrees are great, but also in conjunction with scripture, because that's the, that's what's going to hold us in those dark seasons. Another decree is when I speak and pray his will, he listens to my request. So as we come together as a couple, this is why we're doing this as a couple, think about these things. So another scripture that, that kind of piggies with that is in first John 5, 14 and 15, which is one I, I love. Now, this is the confidence that I have in him. Mm -hmm. That if I ask anything according to his will, he hears me. Mm -hmm. He hears me. Mm -hmm. And if I know he hears me, I know I have the petitions that I desire of him. Mm -hmm. 
So that's when it says, when I speak and pray his will, he listens to my requests. And we know if we're praying his will, it is done. Yes, That's his word. His Mm -hmm. will. That's the key. Mm -hmm. What is his will? That's when we talked about, even in the previous recording, we talked about finding out what is God's will for your marriage. Mm -hmm. And that is definitely something to focus on, especially in times where things may seem uncertain in the world. But with God, there's no uncertainty. He is God. He is faithful. He is just. And we're again talking to ourselves. Okay, so whatever you speak and pray his will. Listen, he's listening. And as it says in First John 4, uh, 5, 14 and 15. So what's the next one we wanted to, to bring out? Another decree. The words that I speak manifest so that I must bridle my tongue. So ah. now just think about that for a second. The <laughs> words that, that you and I speak, mm-hmm. okay, they will manifest. All right. Yes. So you have to make sure that you're, uh, that you're guarding your tongue and that you're putting a bridle on that tongue mm. because... You know the tongue is a is a is a <laughs> deadly is a deadly instrument, it right? Can be, yeah. It can speak death or it can speak life, That's according to yeah. according to uh, Proverbs eighteen and twenty one. Mm-hmm. Death and life is in the power of the mm-hmm. tongue, and mm-hmm. and those who love it will eat its fruit. So that means you're mm. going to eat bitter fruit, or you're going to eat good yeah. fruit. So you decide you de- <laughs> you decide on what type of fruit that you would like to have. Yeah, okay? what are you eating? So right, so we we eating sweet fruit. What have you said in the past <laughs> yesterday is that what you're eating today mm, good question another decree we would like to to focus on we cannot and will not stop pursuing god's purposes for our lives you know why mm. and we quote the scripture a lot in jeremiah 29 and 11 for mm. i know Mm-hmm. The thoughts, this is God's talking to you mm-hmm. that I have towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and mm-hmm. not of evil and to give you a hope, a future and a hope. Yes. So that's why we cannot stop pursuing God's purposes for our life because he already knows, right? He knows. The end, you know, as they used to say when I was growing up, God knows the beginning and the end of our lives. He does. Mm-hmm. So why not pursue his purposes for your life, for your marriage? He already knows what he wants to happen. That's right. Right. Absolutely. So why, why, why fight against that? Mm-hmm. So he said, break. yeah. So kick in a, joke, uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Don't kick a grin against the prick. <laughs> As they say, <laughs> the resistance going against the grain. In this case, yeah. you don't need to. In Job 42 and 2, it says, I know that you can do everything. Yes. Yes. Everything. And that no purpose of yours can be withheld from us is that good That's no good. purpose of yours of the father can be withheld from us amen so we just wanted to give you some decrees to think about and i think we should go over them really quick again before we get into the prayer because we want to pray about a s- specific area tonight i am a child of the most high god remember god is our, our father. father we will not be afraid because our father is with us and wants what is best for us Mm-hmm. The Father is our divine divine protection. protection. And remember, you can still include Psalms 91. We've been doing that one as well. God cannot fail. fail. It's impossible. God does not lie. If he says he's with us, if he says he's a shield, our protector, he is just that. When when you speak and pray his will, he listens to your Your request. He listens to our request as we pray his will. The words that I speak manifest. The words that you speak manifest. So we must all brighter our tongue. So we're careful. But and sometimes, let me let me just stop right there for just a quick moment. Sometimes that may seem like it's challenging because so many things can be happening here, there. It's like it's like woof, woof, woof. Like you maybe seem like you're getting hit from every corner, and you'll be tempted to speak. Oh yeah. This has been a test out for me been, over out, the years. Out of your emotions. Out of, the, so. out of your emotions, out of your feelings, out of the right now situation. And a lot of times when we're speaking out of our emotion, it's not according to what God is saying. Because a lot of times he'll say something. If you ever heard the voice of the Lord, we'll get into that in another session. And he'll say, I'm going to do this, 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 and this. But what you're seeing is not that, 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 and that. And so you're tempted to say what you see versus what you heard from the Lord. Mm. So you have to be careful about what you're speaking. And sometimes that may mean you need to be silent. Now, you can't stay silent because you got to eventually align your, your, your words with what he's saying. But sometimes until you can really bridle that, get that lasso on that tongue and say, I'm not going to say those things, what I'm feeling. I just got to believe. I got to believe beyond what I see. 
That's all right. right. The other one was we cannot and will not stop pursuing God's purposes for our lives. So those are, are different decrees. Like I said, we hope that'll be helpful for you. We have some more. We'll do it another session. But we want to transition into the prayer portion because we talked about prayer. We did communion and the prayer portion, because remember, we've been talking about couples coming together, praying over your own region. So we're still looking to connect with those that are in different regions. We put out a few, uh, a few fillers, if you will. And so we're looking to connect with some people in different regions. Again, it doesn't matter if you're in Seattle, Washington, if you're in D.C., if you're in Texas, Florida, wherever you are, whenever you see this, whether it's on Facebook Live or on our YouTube channel, we want you to consider connecting with us. So our email address, if you want to pray from different regions, we're in the Georgia area. Uh, you can email us at enrichingyourmarriage at gmail.com and just say we're in, we want to pray, we want to be a part of this to connect with other couples that are going to pray over our regions. We want to build a community of prayer. All right. Mm -hmm. And so our website also check that out, enrichmymarriage.com. You can find out good information about us, about why we have a heart and a passion to want to help couples enrich their marriage. What, honey? One, One day, day at, at a time. time. That's our passion. That's our part of our destiny. God has called us to do that. And so we are walking in that day by day, working behind the scenes to, to push that forward. So we tonight want to talk about praying for our government officials. Again, we're here in the Georgia area because we know that in this particular climate that we're in with everything that's going on in our nation in the world, okay, we're trusting the Lord, but we also want to pray over our government officials. Now, why should we pray for our government officials? Because it's, it's required. That's a requirement that God has given us to pray for those that have authority and those are have authority and those are in the positions of authority and have rule over us mm -hmm. um, and, and pray that God would, would, you know, that, that those officials would get the mind of God, you know, get the heart of God, mm -hmm. that they would get God's wisdom to making those hard decisions. And we know that it's not always a, a uh, pleasant thing to be when you're, when you have so much pressure on you, you're making so many decisions it's it's easy for us to to criticize and say what a person should do and how they hmm. should do it but the thing about it we should pray and that god would give them wisdom on what to do at the precise moment in time because it affects everyone you know not just the one group of people it affects everyone some type of way mm -hmm. okay so that's why it's important for us to pray for those that are in positions of authority but also as you praying for them, you really check in yourself as well. Now you're, 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 you're conditioning your heart not to be judgmental, mm. you know, because it's easy for us to pass judgment, especially when we are not in that position and making those tough decisions. That's good. So one of the scriptures, you would just want to give you one, but one of the scriptures that we use to amplify in first Timothy two and one saying why we're praying for officials because we think that's part of the mandate as a couple and we hope other couples will agree it says first of all then i urge that petition specific requests prayers intercession prayers for others and thanksgiving be offered on behalf of all people for kings and all who are in positions of high authority so that we may live a peaceful and quiet life in godliness and dignity. So as, as Christians, it is our duty to pray. We're not talking about political parties. That's not applicable. We're not talking about that. We're saying whoever is in office, we should still be praying for them. And in particular, we're talking about in this local region uh, that we're in, in Atlanta, whether, depending on where you are. So we want to really start from that, that particular place. And so you want to start with the prayer for our government officials as mm -hmm. the Lord leads. So just join in with us mm -hmm. again. We, we, we think it's so important that we pray for those that are in authority because they're making decisions, whether you agree with them or not, they're making decisions. So it makes yes. sense to pray for them mm -hmm. as Daryl said, for godly wisdom mm -hmm. to be that they're using godly wisdom. So mm -hmm. with that being said, mm -hmm. Yes, Heavenly Father, we just thank you and bless you and appreciate you for this opportunity to yes. be able to come to the throne of grace, whereby which we can find grace to help in a time of need, to help in a time of trouble, to help in a time of uncertainties, to help in times, Father, where it appears to be uh, 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 so full of darkness and, no, mm. and lack of clarity. Yes. But Father, 
where you said to, to call upon you and that you were uh, answering, mm -hmm. that you would show us great and mighty things which we know not of. Yes. God, we pray for our government. We pray for our governmental officials. We pray for those that are in positions of authority. Yes. And Father, we know that it's not necessarily easy for them to be in the positions that they are in. But God, we ask in you that you would, Lord God, that you would touch their hearts, soften their hearts. Mm -hmm. God, that you give them the ability, Father, to cry out upon you and to seek you for wisdom and to seek you for answers in the name of Jesus. Yes. And God, many know, the Lord God, that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and you are the yes. God of the heavens and the God of the earth. But God, many times when people yes. are in pressured situations, Father, many times they're yes. not necessarily thinking clearly, but God, I pray mm -hmm. that you would even send, Lord God, advisors, mm -hmm. God, with, with the Holy Spirit, that they would be able to help direct them and guide them and help them make those tough decisions yes. in those crises and in those uh, uh, situations, God, yes. that appears to be, Lord God, so many uncertainties mm -hmm. and God, there's lack of understanding, yes. but God, I pray that you would even give our, our local officials, Lord God, yes. even understanding, wisdom, Father, God, that you would let Holy Spirit, Father God, to prick their hearts and, and God, that their hearts will become uh, pliable before you and yes. God, that you can speak from heaven and God, heaven, Lord God, will begin to, uh, earth will begin to respond to heavens yes. in yes. the name yes. of Jesus Christ, God. We pray, Lord God, and lift up, oh God, our government and we lift up the cabin, and we lift up, Father, the secretaries and we lift up those that are in positions yes. of authority, Father. We lift up the House of Representatives. We lift up the Georgia Senate, uh, Senate, Lord God. We lift up, Lord God, the eternal, eternal generals. We look, we lift up, Lord God, the lieutenant uh, governor. Mm. We lift up, Father God, even, yes. Lord God, the secretary of state, yes, Lord God, yes, the school, yes. the state school uh, superintendent, Father. Yes. We lift up, oh God, the commissioner of uh, agriculture, Lord God, the commissioner of labor, the commissioner yes. of, of uh, public uh, commissioners and God, even the yes. insurance commissioner yes. of the state of Georgia yes. in the name yes. of Jesus Christ, yes. Father. We lift up your people, oh God. Yes. We lift up, oh God, even though God, the capital of Georgia, we lift mm. up uh, our mayors and council me members, Father. We lift up the school superintendents of, yes. of, our, of our counties in the state of Georgia yes. in the name of Jesus Christ, God. We pray that you would Thank breathe you, afresh upon them, God. Yes. We pray, God, that you would, Lord God, that you would give them the word from heaven yes. and father that they will fall uh, fall uh, upon their knees before your presence yes. seeking you yes. lord god for the answers and seeking you for yes. directions in the name of jesus christ mm -hmm. god this country have never experienced father what it's experiencing today but god this is we have no no point of reference other than your word is true yes. lord god you you cannot lie father that you lord you are a protector for them that believe and trust you father yes. in the name of jesus christ god yes. we pray a blood wall and a blood shield around this country yes. lord god around our state lord yes. god around the, the the counties the 159 yes. counties of the state of georgia yes. father we pray for the safety, Hallelujah. Lord God, of this of, of our community, Lord, in yes. the name of Jesus Christ, God. We pray, yes. Father, that you would give us words, words, Lord God, of encouragement to be able Hallelujah. to speak into the lives of your people, yes. the ones, Father God, that find themselves hopeless and and God and don't have directions, God. And yes. we pray that you would give us a, a ready word, Father, Hallelujah. your word to say how good it is for a word to yes. be spoken in good and in, in due season. Let these due seasons, Father God, yes. come up upon us and that we will be able to yes. speak into the hearts and the lives of your people yes, father lord. we pray lord god for our government we pray yes. for the state of georgia Hallelujah. we pray for our cities yes. oh god around yes. Yes. around yes. the uh, around the states in the name of jesus yes. christ god we pray father god for your protection yes. we pray for your wisdom god we yes. pray for the anointing to destroy and breaks yokes yes. we pray for the intercessors through god to continue to arise yes. and begin continue to stand on posts and, and God, that you would give downloads, and Father, that you would give them, uh, give us, oh God, the ability to execute in yes, seasons and yes. times in which you're calling us to do. Father, we know yes. these are perilous seasons and times, but God, you said that you would protect us in yes. the name of Jesus oh, Christ. Yeah. Protect us, Father God, from hurt, harm, and danger. Yes, protect us, Father God, from the 
from the snares of the enemy. Yes. Protect us, Father God, from the Lord God, from the pestilence, O God, that walketh in noonday and yes. those that, Lord God, walk in night seasons in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. Release you and dispatch your angels thank to be encamped you, around and about us, Father. We thank you for safety, God. Safety. We thank you for life and that more abundantly. Yes. We thank you for Holy Spirit that you would give us, Lord God, uh, directions and God that you would nudge us and, and God that you would cause us, oh Father, to be sensitive to your yes. spirit yes. and be sensitive to the movement of your of the of your presence yes. in the name of Jesus thank Christ, Lord. God. We honor you. Yes. We bless you. Yes, Lord. We praise you. We yes, magnify Lord. you. We exalt you. Thank you. We thank you for our city counselors yes. and let the counsel of the Lord, Father yes. God, be their portion and yes. be upon them yes. in the mighty name of Jesus yes. Christ. God, yes. we bless you. We bless you. We give you glory. And Father, we thank you also. We add in even our mayors, especially the mayor of the capital of Georgia, which is Atlanta. We thank you for Mayor Bottoms. We thank you for the divine wisdom resting upon her on how to navigate through the terrain in this season. We thank you for all the council members that work with the mayor, whether yes. it's in Atlanta or the, all the other mayors in this state. We have many, 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 many counties. We thank you for all the officials in all 159 counties, Father, yes. that you would breathe upon them so that they yes. can make the right decisions for all of the people, Father. Yes. This is about people coming together, but we thank you for all people. We thank you especially for your children, Father, standing up, being in their rightful place, no matter what county they may be in, Father, yes, Father. across this state, Father. We thank you that they will hear the call, that they will hear the call to prayer as married couples. They will hear the call to intercede as married couples. They will hear the call to help someone else that is in need as a married couple. They will hear the call for whatever it needs to be done, whatever, if someone needs help, Father, that we will help those. We will discern who we can yes. help, Father, in this yes. season, Father. It will not just be about us, but we will be the church. Yes, we will be God. the hands and the feet, Father, that go out into the world to let them know who you are by our love, yes. by our action, by us helping, by us not just praying, but being able to help in, in different ways that you give us, Father. So we thank you. Thank you, Father. For even all the, the students that are out now, that are not in the, the actual buildings, but are online. We thank you for even the teachers that are teaching online. Yes. Those that are teaching online. Father, give them the wisdom. Encourage their hearts in yes, this season. Father. Let them know that their job is so vitally important to our future. And we thank you, Father, for touching each and every teacher, that they will continue to, to press in even online to give all they can give to the students that are online and that are willing to learn. We thank you for the public school. So we thank you for the K-12 system that has been online for a while, but we thank you for those teachers even being encouraged and not moving, but especially the teachers that have been in the classroom. We thank you for each and every teacher, Father. We bless them to go forth and to teach yes. even through technology. Thank that you. it is possible even for them to impart wisdom, yes. to give the divine uh, revelation of different things, even through technology. So we thank you for technology. Thank you, Father. For this being an option in this season. Yes, Thank Father. you, Father. What would we have done without the technology base? So we thank mm. you, Father, for the release of the technology base. And not just in this season, but in this going forward into the future, because it's going to be used for so many different things. So, again, we thank you for, for upholding the school, public school system, even the private school system. Father, bless each and every teacher, whether it's private or public. Thank you for, again, encouraging them to do, to teach, to train, to impart, to challenge, to even challenge. Yes, challenge in this season of technology. Yes. They can still challenge. So I thank you for giving them creative strategies on how to still challenge the students so thank that they you, can Father. continue to learn. Maybe even at a greater level, Father, because now we thank you that there's less distractions, yes. there's less disruptions in, that you may have in a, in a traditional classroom setting, because now those who are online, we thank you that their attention will be turned towards the lessons, that they will complete everything they need to complete in this season. So we thank you, Father. Thank you, Again, Father. for every government official yes. in this state. Thank we you, lift Jesus. you up and we know there are other couples that are interceding that are lifting you up and we're going to continue to lift you up 
in this season and even beyond because this too shall pass amen this is not the end yes. so we thank you father that there is a future and a hope in you yes. and we give you glory and honor father we thank you for this time of allowing us to have intercession with your people we thank you that this is in char uh, charging that is uh in invigorating couples to stand mm. on their posts and so we give you glory and honor now for what you have done through our decrees tonight, through taking communion tonight. Yes. And whenever this is seen, Father, we thank you that it will touch the lives of those who need it the most. And we give you glory and honor in Jesus, in Jesus name. name. Amen. Amen. So this is the Bakers again coming to you as a, a married couple wanting to enrich, help you to enrich your marriage through prayer, through intercession, not yes. just praying about us because that's not what we're coming, coming about. We know you need encouragement. That's why we did decrees. <clears throat> Excuse me. But we want to make sure we're focused on what we need to do. Get our orders from what? The Father. The Father. We're getting our intercessory orders from the father and the strategies that we're going to need going forward. It's not just because of now it's period. You have to have your orders and then you have to have strategy on what you need to do to combat whatever is happening uh, around for your, uh, around the state or wherever you are for your intercessory assignment. Is that good? That's great. So again, check out our website. Enrich my marriage. and we plug this because we have we have some good information on the website. We really want to mm -hmm. share it with those who may need it. We have different things on there you can check out. So enrichmymarriage.com. Also remember, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We want yes. those subscriber numbers to go up mm -hmm. because again, we have a lot of videos. We have even videos where we did our video blog from when we went to Africa. Last year, 2019, we have a lot of little video clips from that. So just go to our YouTube channel, Marriage Enrichment The Baker, and subscribe. Yes, please. Also, tweet us, Marriage Enrichment The Bakers at Destiny Arrive. And you can find us on Instagram. It's going to be under my name, Charlotte Baker. But we, you can find us there. We're always posting little things there. So, mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> we're so. ending our <laughs> we're ending our anniversary week i'm just plugging that because i'm so i'm so glad to be with this guy <laughs> <laughs> i'm glad 20 to be years. with you too baby that is so sweet mm -hmm. yeah so we're ending our 20 year anniversary uh week and so we hope you you are having a good week you had a good week right yes we encourage yes. you to encourage each other you have to encourage each other, right? It's important to encourage each other. And also it's important to encourage yourself as well. Okay. Yeah. You know, and, and, and keep a word in on your lips that's going to bring life. <laughs> uh, uh, keep a word on your lips that's going to encourage you and also to look past, you know, the, the present situation because this present situation is not going to always be here. It shall truly pass as well. But the thing about it, I think most importantly is that what are you learning from this season that we're in as well? A um, lot of times we we miss the 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 learning opportunities and we list we miss those those opportunities to grow in some areas when we're looking at a uh, a dilemma and we want it to pass. Mm. Okay. However, what can we learn? And then also, what have you seen God do in this season yeah. and in this time as well? Now and then also, are you are you still yet looking to be the solution or are you still yet looking to be part of the problem? Those mm. are decisions that you have to make. <laughs> and I think you have to make them not just on a daily basis, but also moment by moment. And so uh, be encouraged mm -hmm. is our prayer. We speak blessings, grace, yes. great grace. Shalom, shalom. And remember, take this time, as he said, since most of us, pretty much everyone, is self quarantining or just in the house. I had to say it like that. Make sure you're spending time with your honey and your family because the children are at home, as we've already said. Yes. So, you know, do fun things, play some games, do some learning games, do some fun games. Take time to reconnect if you feel you've been disconnected. So, again, take advantage of this time together yes this is monumental time together as a family as a couple 
take advantage of that time and don't don't have that oh man the kids are home <laughs> just know they grow up quick because our daughter is 17. 17 she'll be off to college soon so take that time now we want to encourage you all right so yeah. with that being said we're going to sign off for the night <laughs> he's got to do the peace sign <laughs> that's funny isn't that isn't that funny but <laughs> Hey, I'm Charlotte. And I'm Daryl. And we are uh, the, the Bakers. Bakers. And we are going to be talking to you real soon. Look out for another live video. Or again, you can catch this on our YouTube channel. But we'll be talking to you soon. So good night. Good night. Good night.